Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Doctor Who. A great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, obviously, the Master is like, basically, take my hand. Doctor Richard Doctor's like, no, I'm not going to, but it's like, hey... You either do that or I choose one of your humans to kill. So the doctor reluctantly goes with him to Gallifrey and is like, oh, look at what I've done. You know, because the fact is, it's like, despite everything that, you know, uh, the master's done, it still hasn't alleviated him of his anger. You know, because the doctor brings it up. It's like, are you, are, do you, are you any less angry? Which obviously for the master, that's not the case. So he proceeds to show her everything. And it's really interesting because we actually get to learn even more about Gallifrey in this sense of like, we learned that basically there's a database essentially of every experience of like recorded time lords and stuff like Gallifreyans and stuff like they exist in like this one pool of knowledge which is kind of interesting like everything that they've ever been through everything they've seen every experience is there and apparently the doc I mean um master like found him like he didn't destroy it. he kind of like delved into it along with the matrix and ends up locking the doctor inside of it to kind of give her a history lesson of like exactly what's going down and i think it's really interesting so we'll, we'll go ahead and focus on that so the doctor learns about like okay so kind of goes back to the history of uh gallifrey in particular with uh um tak Yun, who is essentially the first to a certain extent, an earlier, because there was a race that existed before Gallifreyans on Gallifrey, and Tatayun was a part of that, ended up kind of traveling the stars and ends up at this gate to what appears to lead to a different universe. And lo and behold, who does, um, it in, uh, Tatayun ends up meeting, uh, this, t uh, child, and you know, Tatayun, to, um, adopts a child and they kind of travel the stars a little too before returning home. But because of an accident, uh, the child ends up dying, but then the child regenerates. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, so that's the first ever regeneration on the Gallifrey. I was like, I was like, okay, so is this thing like the like is this child like the f technical father or the mother or father of all like time lords or something like that? But then we really get into it because Tata you wanted to understand, okay, this you know regeneration and over the years and many different regenerations from the child regenerating over and over and over again tat ten yun finally found a means to it and it's so interesting because like, it's kind of that same thing um, like i brought up about uh altered carbon because altered carbon kind of has almost a similar thing of like immortality in, in a similar vein uh, and it's so interesting that kind of have that uh kind of almost in this series as well it's just that that thing to be able to be like oh just to be able to live forever to a certain extent and Tat Tae Yoon uh, ended up uh, recreating the uh, regeneration and used it on herself and she was able to and that was what eventually gave birth to like Time Lords being able to regenerate and stuff like that which is interesting it's literally stolen from something I was like oh so literally your entire because it made it because it almost seems like it was something that maybe Time Lords could have always done maybe it's just something that kind of passed down it's like no like it got got passed on to certain people and stuff like that but it's like so your history was kind of almost basically stolen from another being um and then the master because like obviously the doctor was like okay so that's what happened and then like they kind of rolled out the whole like oh you can only have 12 lives type of situation but then it becomes a whole thing of like you know the doctor has a big question what happened to the child it's like you're the child and you know in a grand scheme and what i love about that is it's like i brought that up before when the doctor met ruth and the ruth was like oh i'm the doctor it's like the doctor legitimately has identity crisis like wait wait what once again i figured as much because what he kept saying of like my because my thought was that uh ruth was the real doctor that our doctor wasn't you know 12 jody whitaker well, not 12 uh 13 uh was actually um was actually a fake doctor like meant to hide like the truth or something like that which i kind of got right but kind of not because it turns out ruth is still the doctor and so is our doctor i'll get to that in a second but it's an interesting thing of like that's also why because obviously the master always had this rivalry with the doctor because the doctor's the, the master's best friend yet rival so it's like there's a real love hate there's the uh epitome of a love hate relationship there and it's like to know that like because the master always wants to prove oh i'm better than the doctor in every way now finding out literally a part of the doctor exists within him it's like you kind of 
no matter what I accomplish, there will always be a part of you that's a part of me. And it's not just a part of me. It's literally a part of our entire species. So it's enough to kind of piss him off because it's like literally I would not be able to look anywhere on this planet without being able to see remnants of you. You are basically the catalyst to our entire race, our our entire way of being so it infuriates him because it's almost it's almost like the doctor represents this monumentous uh, accomplishment that she wasn't aware she had accomplished and it's just constantly staring him in the face and it's just like it's like because it's like he's like the doctor always had this element of like you always kind of had this little bit of you that kind of acted like you were better than this or you were different from us and it turns out you are you, you kind of always felt like you were special and it turns out you are and it's just that's what infuriates him the most and I think that's such an interest because to me I always think that's such an interesting element like motivation for a villain it's like I'm going to be better than you it kind of play like a great example of that would be like the flash or reverse flash in some kind continuities that's their whole thing of like the reverse flash is like i want to be better than you i want to be better than the flash kind of you know no greater motivation uh than that you know pride pride can be quite an ugly beast you know so i just think that's kind of an interesting element to all this but for the doctor you know it's like your entire life has been a lie because it's like wait no no i have memories growing up going to school with you it's like no they made yes you lived all those lives but that means you've lived lives before that one so, you, so all that did happen it's not like they faked your memories or anything it's like you lived all that all your lives uh everything that you remember uh but everything but there you lived countless lives before that it's like how many and the doctor tries you know because um the uh, master ends up showing her it's like oh no like look at all these um well, because we got that other side of things what we saw last episode uh the other side of things with um what was his name? What's his name? Brandon? I don't remember. Uh, the baby that ended up falling, like, ended up getting shot and fell, but was still alive. I'm like, what the hell is that all about? Well, it turns out, I was like, is that supposed to be the doctor? Because apparently there's something called the division that the doctor kind of got brought up. I think it's like, essentially, it's like, a, I, get, I think, a secret uh, Time Lord organization. It's essentially, it seems like there's a, a, a division of the time lords literally called the division i think that were just legitimately uh time cops so very you know it, which is really interesting it's like you're not to interfere with time but only step in when certain things so that also breaks the begs the question like why the doctor kind of feels the need to kind of intervene in certain point in times because maybe subconsciously the doctor's following some training she kind of had many lifetimes ago that you know it's like uh, it's really the doctor being a good person and wanting to help people, but I'm sure for her it's like, what if that's not 100% me? Maybe that was something that it's like I said, something that's derived, like been you know diluted over the years, that's buried inside of my subconscious and inside of me, uh, following some job I had with the division. Like like I said, I, I want to think it's, it's it's kind of like some version of like you know the CIA or something like that. That'd be kind of interesting, like some uh, Time Lord version of the CIA, uh, except you know doing missions all across time type of situation. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Well, since we're talking British, I'd say MI6 to kind of, you know, uh, I mean, obviously it's the same thing, but, you know, just in the context of everything, I figured MI6 would probably be the more astute uh, example to use. But that's trippy. But to also know that that's what that was last episode too. It would have never, I thought that was a Cyberman thing. It's like, no, apparently that was a doctor who, thing uh basically they put a perception filter over it, so that's why it looks the way it does and so essentially they wipe the doctor's memories of everything it's like we're sorry but we're gonna have to thank you for your service I, I wonder is it like that for everyone who had that job with the division i guess it's like when when you've made such maybe monumentous leaps and changes to the history for the betterment it's like we can't have anyone potentially finding out what changes you made go back in time and try to stop them type of thing so maybe that's why it's like we need to wipe your memory or it's just like you 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 have so many secrets we can't take the chance you might spill them so so that's why the doctor can't remember any of those previous lives but there's no um anything beyond what we saw last episode of like the doctor's memories being wiped at that point in time. we don't have anything beyond that because the uh the uh, head honchos made sure to wipe all that out of like the matrix database and the master's like despite how good i am and how smart i am it's actually a beyond me to even retrieve all of it but the memories that the doctors have kind of been kind of getting those glimpses of it were like fragments so meaning that maybe tet Yun left that there to give the doctor an opportunity to learn who she really is potentially but that's an interesting thing because it's like 
over the, like every life that the doctors lived, the 13, technically 14 lives that the doctors lived over the course of the entirety of Doctor Who history to know that there's even more lives out there. There is so much of your life you don't even know about because even the doctor's like, how many lives? And Master's like, honestly, I couldn't even copper, I couldn't even hazard a guess. But whatever, however much of the doctor's history was there made up a crap ton of like space in the Matrix. So like, who knows how like the doctor might think she's like because the doctor's like 2000 or something like that who knows how old actually the doctor is but once again it's like you predate Gallifrey being what it is now what it eventually became so it's like it's crazy and it also explains it's so interesting too that that means the doctor is from some other universe so it's like what universe are you actually from who are your actual people if the Gallifreyans aren't actually your people I mean you know the fact is also means you have a you had a you had a, an adoptive mother you don't remember too so that's you know because you had like a f fake mom and dad and everything like that but it's like what about your you know uh Tech Taeyun and you never got to know her you know it's just like there's always going to be a part of the doctor like never remembering her past you know so that's a really fascinating element just on its own. But then we get up to what the Master's up to because um, the Cybermen are showing up. Um, oh, since we're talking about everything on a ship, that went away. I, I feel so bad because like that lady, she stayed behind to make sure they could, get, the others could get away. Ends up getting killed by the Cybermen. And it's like, okay, we're kind of trapped. How are we going to handle this? Well, basically, Graham is like, well, I came up with an idea. It's not, kind of a dangerous idea. But come on, yeah, so we kind of come through this before. It's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, we got this. How dangerous? And the plan is to basically hide themselves inside of Cybermen armor so that they could get off the ship. And uh, luckily, um, it ultimately did work, though. And that was kind of a tense moment of like that the lone, the original last Cybermen dude coming through and it's like checking all of all the and it's like they're they're like trying to hold their breaths and stuff like that. Uh, but luckily, it all worked out in the end. So, but before that, there was that very heartwarming moment between Yaz and Graham, where Graham was talking about the fact is Yaz talked about the fact is a doctor is like the best person that she knows. But for Graham, it's like you are. You're so brave, and you know you never let fear kind of stop you. Always kind of keep fighting. The fact of the matter is, you don't have you know a TARDIS, you don't have a sonic screwdriver, but that doesn't stop you from pushing over forward. And you know, for him, it's just it, it just basically it's like how remarkable she is. And then it's like, yeah, and then, you know, Yaz is like, well, you're not half bad for a human. And then Graham's like, really? That's all you got for me? I literally said all this fantastic stuff about you. And it's like, that's all you have to say? He's kind of like, yeah. I'm like, I love that. Poor, poor Graham. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, luckily they were able to get off the ship. Obviously the master is talking with head honcho of the Cyberman. Because essentially what his plan is, because he has something known as the... Um, was it the destruction particle? Uh, essentially, it's a device that's supposed to wipe out all things organic. And and so, like, you know, it's like, oh. Because even, you know, the master's bringing up the family. Like, isn't that a little kind of crazy for you to do that? Because first he was like, oh, I invite you to Gallifrey. The fact of the matter is this world is yours. I mean, you were able to do what no Cyberman ever thought possible, even dreamed of. Making Gallifrey yours to conquer, you know, it's like well, I kind of you know laid laid the path for destruction, but it's like oh, it's all yours. It's a gift, you know. So it seems like the Master and the Cybermen weren't working together from the beginning. I was wondering about that. Whether it seems like they're two separate things that came together. We still never found out how in the hell the Master got out of like that other universe. Who knows? But um, the fact of the matter is, uh. With this whole situation, he's kind of like, oh, you want to wipe out organics? And it's like, well, to be fair, Cybermen are human, too. They have a human component to them, you more so than others. But his plan is, he says, like, the more recent Cybermen he's kind of awakened, he's modified them so that they are not organic. And eventually he's going to modify himself. So when he activates a particle, it's going to wipe out all organics. The whole plan is to wipe out all organic around the universe and when that's all said and done, they'll be the only ones left. And then I love the master being like, well, then you're going to be robots. And he's just kind of like, he's so upset because he's like, really? There's so much potential here. You're just going to be robots? There's plenty of other stupid robots. Like, Jets, you're going to stop at robots? The fact of the matter is, it's like your plan is good, but it could be great. And so he's like, I'm here to kind of give you an extra hand. So that was kind of, you know, interesting. And so... 
it's interesting trying to figure out okay so like what does the master want in the end of all this and the master uh it's like oh my god because like the uh, cyberman is showing off the army and he's like oh my god he's like oh look at it it's so amazing and stuff like that and it's like for him it's like though all this planning is from the cyber uh Rillium, but it's like for him it's like oh but it's still kind of think you know the whole thing is thinking small and he's kind of like wanted to get a peek at it, but it's like oh it won't leave until i'm dead he's like oh really and then he shrinks him and it's like oh and I love later on, he kind of gets upset at himself for not saying the villain. He's like, no, I'm so stupid. I should have said, uh, I'll, I'll cut, someone needs to cut you down a size. And Dan's after him. He's like, I got too, I got too trigger happy. He's like, I'll, I'll get it next time. But then you get that real, like, villainous moment of him being like, I was kind of hoping that, you know, there was a part of me that thought, you know, shrinking you like this, compressing like this would activate the destruction particle. Uh, I keep saying destruction particle. Is it death particle? Whatever the case may be, he thought it would activate the particle and it's like, and then it would all be over. So essentially, he's a madman that's kind of waiting for the madness to end. It's like, I've been living, I've been trapped in his nightmare and it just kind of like, I was kind of hoping like if it was going to end like that, I was going to be okay with. So that's why I took the gamble, but looks like this madness has to keep going. So it's like, oh, well, make the best of the situation, which I just think that's such an interesting element for a villain to be like, oh, I I, I knew it would be a possibility that this could all end. And I was actually kind of fine with me, it being the end of everything. But if it won't be the end that way, it's his plan is to ultimately bring an end other way. So when the doctor kind of rises the first time, out of the matrix he shows it off that basically he combines the two worlds cyberman meets time lords i'm like that's really really interesting making it so that basically cyberman become unstoppable killing machines because it can always regenerate because the limit was something um tech tate yoon put in place like the whole like only having 12 lives thing uh, but obviously, like, without the restriction, they could just come back over and over again. Cybermen are already dangerous, and on top of that, you add in the fact that it can be immortal. That's really fascinating, and it turns out, it, essentially, you know, it's kind of like, basically, this is a creation. It's like the Time Lords, which you essentially made, Doctor, and obviously the Cybermen, which I'm, this new creation that, so it's kind of like something that's born from both of us, who, born from what you are and born from my mad genius. It's kind of interesting, so... There's all that. Uh, Ryan and Ethan and, um, once again, the actor who plays uh, Val from um, Krypton are dealing with um, Cybermen that are landed trying to take care of them. And um, that was an interesting um, situate turn of events when that kind of got ultimately ended up being dealt with. And Ryan has to, like, uh, throw the bomb and everything, which obviously with his coordination issue and stuff like that. But luckily, it, he throws it and it lands, and he's like, "Yeah!" Which I'm like, he because obviously we saw him play hoop earlier in the season. You know, not the best, but it's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, me, I took down a Cyberman, yeah, me, so Brian Sinclair, he's celebrating. But um, I even love that thing later on. You know, it's like, oh yeah, because like home dude had said like guard your loins, and then like, Ryan's like, I don't know how to do that. Ethan's like, me neither. Uh, but the fact of the matter is when it go inside, he's like, all right, this place is like a pet muzzle, uh, puzzle or, you know, and he's like, yeah, that's kind of the point. And, you know, Ryan's like, well, what about, you know, doors, locks or doors that are indestructible? And he was like, I, and the home dude was like, I dream of them, but I kind of had to make do with what I had. So it's kind of like hide and, you know, try and fight the side of me. Because initially Ryan didn't want to, he's like, ah, not the whole biggest, well, obviously he wants to use, he would be fine with using a weapon, but I think spending so much time with the doctor makes him a little reluctant to use a weapon. But by the time, you know, um, that whole Ethan thing, I was like, oh man, that's about to go sideways. But luckily, the, I, I was scared that things were going to go bad in a sense that like, uh, everyone that's on the, that were on the crew, uh, the cruiser ship would have, uh, come down and maybe Ryan, Ethan, and Home Dude would have shot them. I thought that's what, but luckily it's like, no. Nope. And I love that it's like, oh yeah, it takes off the helmet. It's like, yeah, it's us. And then uh, Graham couldn't take his off. He's like, yeah, it's, it, it's stuck. So, but now they're making a choice of like, well, we have to go over there to help the doctor. Well, who's willing to step forward and go into the unknown? And of course, who's going to be? Yes, full throttle. You know, and it's like, we're going to help the doctor. So, and everyone's kind of like, well, you know, we're kind of in this. And even home dudes like, well, the fact of the matter is I've lived a long time. But, you know, I can live long enough to kind of, you know, who knows what else, I, you know, I can blow up before I end up kind of kicking the bucket, essentially. So they all kind of join to go help the doctor, which the doctor being in the Matrix at the time uh, ends up meeting up with Ruth, the doctor. And it's like now the do now it makes sense of like, so that's why I was bringing up earlier. It's like they are both the doctors like 
you're the doctor I was. You're basically me from the past. You know, this might. I would assume this is the Doctor Ruth uh, when Ruth was kicking it with division, with the division, and so. Um, which is so interesting when you actually think about that. Well, because you have the division, and obviously, eventually later down, it's it's a different thing, but obviously, it's connected. You have Torchwood, so it's just, I I just think that's kind of interesting. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that's what it's like. Now the Doctor realizes she's like, "You're me from my past," or something. And it's like, well, even Ruth's like, "Well, I don't know what to do on help you on that part." But it's kind of like, I, I like because obviously it's like, oh, like you know, and even if it was true, like, does it matter for her for thirteen? It's like it does matter. That, that that's a part of who I am, but like Ruth brings up the point of like the fact of the matter is who you were has that have, who you, who you are has that ever um, changed or basically affected how you've kind of gone about things and you've always kind of just been yourself regardless. Who you've been has never mattered, you know. And I love the doctor being like, yeah, that yeah that thirteen's like yeah that that sounds like me, and so. You know, uh, kind of getting her up to be like, you know, it's like basically get yourself out of this situation because this universe still needs you. You've got work to do. And I wonder, it is interesting because it's like, how did that happen? It's like, I guess like subconsciously she called out to herself because obviously there's been instances where the doctor has called out to the doctor and well, the doctors have arrived. Obviously, that's been a thing in the past. But um it's interesting, um, that whole situation. And obviously the doctor ended up over... I love this. She's like, wait, I'm talking to myself again. That's a good sign. Uh, and she's telling herself, shush, i got to focus. You know, good thinking, doctor. Shush, but I need to kind of focus. So, um, but the fact is she overloads the Matrix with basically everything that she's experienced over the course of the series. Once again, that's like 2,000 years alone. Side note, um, even... Um, there was a little tidbit where the uh, master referenced the two brain thing. I was like, this is the first season that's ever mentioned that, right? Or, like I said, I don't remember that. Once again, the two heart thing has always been a thing for, for you know, once again, my experience is everything from uh, 2005 when the reboot slash continuation started. So that being with Eccleston as nine till now, that's my experience. Like the original run of Doctor Who, I've never seen. I've seen tidbits. Uh, just because of like, you know, flashbacks and stuff like that, but I've never like experienced any of that. So I don't, the two heart thing has always been a thing, but I feel like this is the first season ever reference. The fact is that Gallifrey slash Time Lords have two brains. So that was interesting. And so the doctor ends up, um, like I said, just um, overloading the system because that's just like a lot for the Matrix to handle. And luckily everyone shows up and it's like, you know, the doctor's like, my fam's here. And it's like, what is it, like a party? And it's like, wait, we got to stop, you know, uh, the uh, master. And it's like sending everyone to um, different, um, sending them to like put charges around the ship. Because if they can blow up the ship, they'll, they'll stop like the rest of the Cybermen army. But the problem is they still got to stop uh, the master and uh his his um his new cyber time lords essentially um and so the doctor's trying to track him down and it leads him to uh the lone cyberman who has uh the particle so it's like okay so what do we do and obviously the doctor's like all right we got to face off one off one obviously the bombs accidentally start going off and they have to get off the ship so the doctor ends up putting them all into a tardis interestingly enough the tardis they're in looks like ruth's TARDIS. I, if I, I might be mistaken, but it looks like it's hers specifically. So that must mean at because that was something that um, the doctor brings up later, on, or maybe it was earlier. Like the fact of the matter is, since I remember growing up as a child, that must mean at some point after they wiped my memory, I regenerated after that memory of like oh like we have to erase it all. After that, the doctor was turned but like regenerated as a kid, and then they brought. Uh, the doctor back to Gallifrey to live a life to keep it's like well you've done what you've done and it's like we need to keep you hidden like I'm, I'm curious like how many people on Gallifrey know uh, knew about that whole situation I didn't even talk about it once again uh showing just how psychopathic the um master is the fact that the matter is he was like oh yeah I killed everybody and I, he basically kept the bodies I mean granted it came a part of this master plan he's like oh, i figured i could use them for something and now he ended up using their dead bodies as uh the foundation for you know his new cybermen and everything so i just thought that was kind of interesting in the long run that he would do that and it's like obviously he has a large list of bodies kind of stored away 
And so, but when the time comes, the doctor plans on dealing with this herself. And for her, it's like she has to stop the master and all the Cybermen now because it's like if they ever get free, like the universe is in trouble. So she takes the detonator, which has to be done manually, and the uh, particle, which obviously gets rid of anything organic, herself included. And Yaz tries to stop her, but she's like, no, I've got to do this because I will do it easily for this universe, but also for them because they're her family and they mean a lot to her. And she's asking Yaz not to stop her. She's like, I have to do this. So she leaves them and tries to get them all to, you know, uh, back to Earth. Get um, those three on a, a plant. You know, it's like, oh, you can, well, those four and get, you know, along with, you know, Yaz, um, Graham and Ryan to get them on back to Earth, you know, in a good time frame, you know. And so the doctor's willing to face off against the master one last time. And, you know, and I like her, you know, kind of getting all up at him because it's like, you know, for, cause it's like, oh, cause for him, he kept talking about the fact that, oh, I broke you, doctor. She's like, you think you broke me? You actually proved that I am more than what I thought I was. There is so much more to me, which makes me more than you. And he's just sitting there, he's like, and he's like, wow, wow. He's like, wow. I kind of like the villain thing of like, oh, I'm not going to let your, oh, that was a good heroic speech, but it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. And so the doctor plans on pulling the switch, but you have the master kind of like, do it, do it. Because I think there is a part of him that kind of wants to die. Like if he dies, if it means taking the doctor with him, sure. But also I think it's just like, once again, I think he's so crazy. Once again, you live long enough to become the villain and all that type of stuff. I've actually referenced that recently in a video. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I think that kind of just happened with the master. When you're so full of rage and anger and you live for a very, very long time, it's just going to grow and grow and grow until you're no longer that person you were. Like, whoever the master once was. Because even at one point, the doctor was like, because of our relationship, don't do this. Let my friends go. Like, just get them out of here. You know, it's like, because of like what, like the history that we have. And he was like because of the history we have you know but almost like in spite of the history we have it's what why he's doing all he's doing but the doctor couldn't bring herself to pull the switch because that's like literal it would have been like for one it means killing everything that you this might not be everything that you've really known but it's still a part of you like the master is still someone that was a friend and everything and this means killing and completely destroying every gallifrey and body that's there so it means just wiping out the rest of the rest of your people making you almost like the like it's that whole thing of almost being truly the last Gallifrey and you know the last time lord it kind of does that but home dude shows up in time I keep calling on that because I keep blank, blinking on his name once again it's the actor who played Val in Krypton he shows up because for him the Cybrillum it's like it got away because he sent it back in time but apparently not far enough so for him it's like he was part of the last line of resistance for that so for him it's like let me be the one the universe still needs you so he's like run doctor and you know it's like and he brings him you know the Cybermen shoot him down but he activates it the doctor slips into another um, TARDIS and obviously we see uh, the explosion. We hear the master say, like, we got to get out of here. So the question is, like, did he manage to get out in time? I don't think the master's dead. Maybe none of his, this, maybe the rest of the, like, bodies of the other Gallifreyan bodies are gone. But maybe some of the new Cybermen he created were still alive. Because an interesting, well, I'll get to it soon enough. But the fact of the matter is, um, obviously, we see, like, the humans landing on Earth, you know, present day. Obviously, uh, the TARDIS looking like a house. And in that moment, I'm like... Right, right. Oh, the beauty of the TARDIS being able to actually change its shape. Which also, the fact is that Roof's uh, TARDIS look like, well, the TARDIS means that it, it, the, the Doctor must have left it looking like that for a very long time. As long as the Doctor's had it, she's probably always had it look like that. So that's just kind of interesting to think about. But um, luckily they were able to... Um, They were on Earth, but it's like, yeah, but what about the doctor, you know? And we see that she did manage to escape, and her TARDIS is in the form of a tree. I, the planet they left the, her TARDIS on is there, so she's like, yeah. It's like, once again, it's like, oh, the beauty of this camouflage, something I haven't been able to experience ever, you know? So, so she's actually, you know, uh, going into her own TARDIS, and she's like, oh, yeah. It's like basically telling the TARDIS uh, not to get jealous, but it's kind of like needs to kind of take a breather. But... Doesn't last long because the Jadoons show up and it's like, wait, what? You've been arrested. So, and she's like, wait, what? And it's like apparently for like an entire lifetime, which my mind immediately goes, I think it's because 
now we kind of know why the why Ruth was being hunted because Ruth was doing some stuff. This once again, this is the doctor when the doctor was working for the division, doing some super like under the radar stuff of like no one's supposed to know the division exists. So it just seems like the doctor's kind of going off doing things or messing with time to a certain extent, like. We don't know who the, what the Doctor was like back then. Maybe it's the same as what the Doctor has been in the, over the course of the series that we've known. Or maybe the Doctor was a completely different person back then. So, it, you know, uh, are we thinking like the rest of the Doctors? Or are we thinking more like the War Doctor? Questions like that I'm curious about. Uh, an aspect to this I'm surprised didn't end up coming up in the season finale. We did not see Jack pop up. I thought we would. Granted, that could be... I mean, that element's there. It's there for the opportunity to be jumped at. So, it becomes a thing of like, well, it depends on when they um, decide to kind of take part in that. Maybe it'll kind of be something they'll use in the nearby future. I don't know. I'm very curious because obviously our group doesn't know what happened to um, the doctor. It could be a thing that Jack pops up and it's like, oh, hey guys, come along. We got to go find a doctor. So that could be a potentially interesting thing to go. We saw like the episode uh, title at the very end of it. So it's like, okay, so is that supposed to be like the first episode of the new season or is that supposed to be like because uh, i'm curious is it going to be like a christmas special or a new year special because this like back to back we've had new year specials from 11 to 12 there was a new year special and 12 started off on a new year special so i'm curious like how that's going to work out. obviously because of the way i'm talking uh we do know that doctor who is coming back for a 13th season slash series I'm so curious to see what that's going to look like. I mean, because also you have to think about it too. Like, well, is this going to be the last time we see like Graham, Yaz, and Ryan? Because even already in this season, they kind of introduced the fact is, well, we can't be traveling with the Doctor forever. Like, because obviously, like, the more time we spend with the Doctor, the less time we have here on Earth. I mean, that's going to be an interesting element because while the Doctor's away, they could potentially end up, you know, living their lives. And it's going to be that thing of reacclimating to having a normal life and everything. But, it, you know, it's that aspect of like when you're away from the Doctor, you kind of miss it and stuff like that especially because they don't know whatever happened to the doctor so i am very curious like i said especially with this judoon uh situation you know because it's like well they never got ruth so now they're well you are still technically the same person you were both the doctor so that means um they ended up capturing 13 instead of ruth which doesn't mean that maybe ruth and uh, 13 will cross paths in potentially in the future as well, which is going to be so interesting. I wonder if they're setting it out to be the new Doctor and River song in a situation of like they get to know each other out of time because it's like now uh, 13 gets to know about her past by meeting Ruth and Ruth kind of inadvertently gets to know about her future. And it's just kind of like that every time uh, the Doctor and uh, River met they always met each other out of time. So it's like every time like the doctor's learning more, like she's always known more about the doctor. So it just, it always led to their relationship being interesting. Obviously this is more of a, like coming to terms with who you are. Once again, the doctor's literally going through an identity crisis. So like kind of having that come full circle in that regard of like literally learning about not some other person yourself is kind of an interesting element to it. Once again, also whether the master's still around, I think he is, I don't think he's dealt with. Once again, how, will we ever find out how he escaped those creatures? Maybe, maybe not. Will they themselves ever pop up the creatures from uh, episodes one and two, that universe he was trapped in? Um, it also makes you wonder, is that why, like, the Doctor and, uh, remember that other universe? Uh, I forget its name, but it took on the form of a frog and it sounded like Grace. That universe. Is that why it and the Doctor kind of got along? Because the Doctor is kind of from another universe, so maybe that kind of added some element to it. That's another thing, dude. I want to dive into that, where the Doctor kind of finds out, where am I from? Like, you know, eventually find her way back to that and potentially, well, what's waiting for me on the other side? Is there something good on the other side? Is there bad? Was she was she kind of like Superman, where it was like, oh, like, this universe is about to go down. We send you through. Because no one actually went to the other side of that portal. Because once uh, Tet Te Yun found the, the Doctor, kind of just left. So it's like... So, so many questions, and I can't wait to find out some answers uh, when Doctor Who returns. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.